Hello class, um, today we are going to be looking at the atom and starting to look at how we draw an atom and represent an atom. So these are the questions for today um, to make sure that you can understand by the end of the notes. Number one, identify and describe the parts of an atom and um, most of you have had that in past classes, so protons, neutrons, electrons. Number two, explain energy levels of electrons and the ideal number of electrons that atoms need to be considered happy. And we're going to talk about what happy means for an atom. And then number three, define valence electrons. Why are they important? And number four, draw a dot diagram of hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. Now on that one, I just picked three random elements. You don't necessarily have to uh, you know, know those particular three elements. I just picked three that we could practice with. So the notes today, again, we're going to do atoms in the periodic table. Um, this is the beginning of chapter four. So for um, section one, maybe a little bit from section two. couple things to review over with atoms um, and compounds is to know the definition. So you had this in the last chapter. Um, atoms, this uh, definition is the smallest part of an element. And so it's really looking at um, how an element is made up of atoms. And atoms themselves cannot be broken down into new atoms. But they can be broken down into subatomic particles. We're going to go through those on the next few slides. But these would be our protons, neutrons, and electrons. And I think you guys have had that in past classes, so it's probably somewhat familiar to you. Now, atoms can combine to form molecules, and a definition of the molecule is the smallest part of a compound. So if we look at the parts of an atom, and kind of where those are found, um, we're going to see that the nucleus is the center of your atom. So if we take here nucleus, that's going to be this section right here, the center of the atom. And you're going to have two things in there, the neutrons that have no charge. And often I represent that as an N with a little zero there showing no charge. And the protons with a positive charge. So I usually do that with a P and a plus. And as we get into future things, you'll see that used a lot. Um, and then we have these energy levels and the energy levels are represented here we only show one energy level on this one um, but that's where your electrons are found and I usually represent that with an E and a negative sign now in this picture we have electrons kind of following this path and they don't actually do that we'll show that kind of on an, uh, another slide how we've ended up finding out more of what electrons actually do, but electrons actually move in a cloud. And so they're kind of in this general area, but it's more of a cloud. It's three-dimensional, and obviously on paper we draw that as a two-dimensional kind of thing. So to show you here again, we have protons that are in the nucleus, neutrons are in the nucleus, and then electrons are in the energy levels. This particular atom, there is one, I think, I don't know if you can see it on the slide on the video here. This particular atom has two protons, two neutrons, and two electrons. And so if we were to look this up and figure out which atom that is, it's going to be dependent on our number of protons. So the identity of an element is based on the number of protons. And in this case, we have two protons, and so two protons tells us that we have a helium atom. Okay, And that's dependent on the number of protons again, and that will be important later. You'll need to know that for sure as we move forward. So we have some ideas of atomic models, and our first one that we will look at is the Bohr model. And you don't necessarily have to know dates. Some people like to know dates just to give them a reference of where we're talking about in history. Um, but you do need to know the idea behind the Bohr model. And the Bohr model said that electrons moved in orbits around the nucleus. And they were kind of stuck there. They couldn't leave that orbit. We now have a better idea of how electrons work. Um, and so we know that they don't actually go in orbits. But we still draw them often this way. So basically, he said that electrons could only move in that specific orbit or path. 
Currently, we use the electron cloud model. And again, dates you don't have to know, but just the idea um, kind of of when, how much longer it took to find this out. Um, and so we now know that electrons are in a region or general area surrounding the nucleus. And they call this an electron cloud. Um, the speed, direction, and location cannot be determined at any one time. They could take an image or a picture of that particular electron and know where it was, but know where it's going, knowing where it's going is not easy and it's not something they can definitely do. The key part here, though, is electrons that are close to the nucleus have low energy. And the electrons that are far away from the nucleus have higher energy. So if we were to draw an atom, this being our nucleus, first energy level here, those have very low energy. And as you get further and further away from the nucleus, these have, these out here, have a lot of energy. We could draw it with energy just so you could see it. So they have a lot of energy as they get further away from the nucleus. Some of that is because when they're close to the nucleus, they're actually um, being pulled in and they're being pulled in pretty tight by the bonds there of the nuclear bond. Where they get further away, they have less pull from the nucleus and so um, they have more energy or more ability to kind of move. Okay. The electron cloud model, a little bit more about that, is that the electrons exist in these energy levels. And you must fill an energy level before an electron will move on. to. So if you must fill the first energy level before you can go to the second, and you must fill the second energy level before you move to the third. And so there are some uh, amounts of electrons that can fit into each energy level. And you definitely do need to know this idea that the first energy level holds two electrons. In this class, since we're doing an introduction to chemistry, we don't really move past the third energy level too often in our drawings or in our elements that we use. But as we move on uh, to chemistry, for those of you that will take chemistry, you will learn more about these energy levels and you'll get into more detail about what they can do. So first energy level, two electrons, second energy level, eight electrons, third energy level, 18 electrons, and fourth is 32 electrons. The way they determine this is by this equation, where n is equal to the energy level. For those of you that like math and you're like, where did those numbers come from? That's how they determine it. You don't have to use this on a test or quiz, but that way you at least have an idea of how they came up with those numbers. Now, for our purposes in an introductory chemistry class, we are worried about eight outer electrons. And so this concept of the octet rule is very important for us because that's when elements are happy or atoms are happy. So this is an atom is stable or happy, we use that word a lot, when its outer energy level is full. And for us, that generally means eight outer electrons, which is octet. That's where we get that word. So eight outer electrons is going to be the important part for us, unless it only fills the first energy level, because the first energy level only needs two electrons. Okay, and this is one of our terms then to understand outer electrons, valence electrons. These are our outermost electrons. And um, so you'll see valence electron a lot of times, that word, instead of outermost electrons. And the key part to the valence electrons is that they determine the chemical properties. They tell you if the atom is going to be reactive or if it's stable the way it is. Um, you will definitely need to know that. This is one of our questions from today. Um, but you also need to understand that on the periodic table, these chemical properties or how many outer electrons they have is easily shown on the periodic table. Um, we know this based on the group that they are in. So all of group one elements have one outer electron. Group two elements have two outer electrons. And so it just helps us. When you look at the periodic table, you'll be labeling these in class and you'll have a good idea of how many outer electrons they are. Okay, so we can represent these outer electrons by showing them in a dot diagram. These are also called a Lewis structure, um, and you may see either one of them on a worksheet, either dot diagram or Lewis structure. And basically all it does is use the symbol and dots for the outer 
electrons. Okay, and it can be determined by the group that they are in. So you can see some examples here. Lithium is in group one and it has one dot where neon is in group 18 or group eight and it has eight outer electrons. A couple things with drawing atomic models. Um, just to get used to it, I'm going to show you here. First, you're going to determine the number of protons, and that's going to be found on the periodic table. And then you're going to find the number of neutrons, also on the periodic table. So that's going to be drawn in the center. For our purposes, you don't have to do all these circles with pluses and minuses, or pluses and uh, zeros in them. Instead, you can just do this. I often do it like this. P plus is equal to 6, and 0 is equal to 6, just so you can see it. And then our electrons are going to be in our energy levels. So you have to determine the number of electrons, and then you have to put them in the appropriate energy levels. This particular one has six electrons. So we have one here, one here in the first energy level, because that can only hold two. And then the remaining four go in the second energy level. If it had over eight for this second energy level, you would fill this energy level and then move on to the next energy level. Always fill an energy level before you move to the next energy level. We'll be practicing these in class, so make sure that you um, take time to look over that and you do the worksheets that we have in class and ask any questions as we're going along to make sure you know how to draw them.